Hi babes, I'm Maddie from Mules and Murder and today we are giving Sue Opper the Chopper her moment in the sun. Let's get into it. So before we get into the infallible Sue Opper, I just have, I'm sorry, I just have to have like a three second celebration for reaching 1,000 subscribers. Oh my God, Um, I'm so like thankful and proud for starting to create and grow this little community of like smart and funny and sensible people. Um, I thank you so much if you're already a part of it. And if you're new here and you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing. I mean, I would love to welcome you to this little community too. But now on to the star of this video, Sue Opper. So we just did a video where we highlighted some of Judge Doro's best moments in the Daryl Brooks trial, and now it is Sue Opper's turn. In our first clip, we're gonna watch a cut of Sue Opper's sentencing statement, and she shows heart, she shows love for the community that she represents, and she shows utter delicious <laughs> disregard for the entity not known to the courts as Daryl Brooks. I think it's very plain on its face. He's a lifelong criminal. He is someone who has repeatedly, continuously disobeyed law enforcement. There's multiple acts of violence. There's weapons violations. This man has a history and a pattern of engaging in violent, dangerous behavior in the community. And it was no different on November 21 of 2021. Yo, she started off with his alluding to his criminal record in the full cut of her sentencing statement she does go through like count by count his open cases what he's been charged with she initially started her statement off with a reading off of his complete criminal record exactly to trigger him and that is the energy that i love oh my god i'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about the attack and i choose to call it an attack as somebody mentioned there's nothing wrong with the parade the parade is good. The parade is the embodiment of a community. <sighs> Sue, Sue Opper, don't you make me cry? Don't you make me cry? Um, so I've read a couple of interviews with Sue Opper and what she says she loves the most is being able to represent victims and let them have their stories be told and represent the people of her community. And her specifically referencing the fact that this was an attack. She's not going to say the parade in reference to what Daryl Brooks did on November 21st, 2021, because he didn't do the parade. He didn't attack on the parade. And she is so correct for framing it in this way because she's right. The parade is good. It is the embodiment of community. And she, the fact that she called that out is so demonstrative of her character and her heart. And I just... I, I love Sue Opper for that. And the facts are very clear, Your Honor. Very few of the victims had any idea this car was barreling down on them. It's an act of a coward, plain and simple. Ooh, she, she was speaking directly to try to trigger him. He... And you'll, I've, I'm pretty sure I included it in this uh, cut, but you will see that he does get triggered by her. And I think that she enjoys manipulating him into a volatile reaction. What is so offensive about this conduct, Your Honor, is obviously the violent nature of it. The defendant's conduct and behavior in this court, his complete lack of uh, regard for the decorum of the court, the respect of the court. So it's not funny, but it's a little funny that she says what is so offensive, Your Honor, is obviously the violent nature of his conduct, but also his behavior in the courtroom. Like she, she has been waiting so long to sound off about this in a clear and concise fashion. And that's what she's about to do. But you just see, you see her eagerness to get to this subject and how aggravated she is by the way that he has behaved inside of a courtroom and has disregarded the rules of procedure and law and behavior that she holds so dear as somebody who's been in this career for three decades. And he can't engage in the most civil behavior 
as being quiet when another person speaks. Many, many people came into this courtroom over the course of the trial and the proceedings. Every one of them was able to sit and obey the court's order. Everyone was able to do that except Daryl Brooks. I love that she brings it down to a childlike level like that too. He can't even be quiet when someone else is talking. And I feel like that's... I, Am I wrong that that's a rule or a a lesson you are taught like very, very early on in elementary school, right? Am I misremembering that? But I feel like that's one of the first things you learn as like a human speaking person. I think he was able to do it. I just don't think he wanted to. I oh, are you triggered by that, Daryl Brooks? Because she nailed you by saying that she knows that you could, you just didn't want to. Is that upsetting to you, Daryl Brooks? Mm. <laughs> I can't even. I can't even pretend to say that I'm gonna cry for you because I simply won't. I just think this is all part of his charade this referring to himself in the third person trying to distract him or, or detract himself i should say from the events taking absolutely no responsibility it's the act of a narcissistic coward yes 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 it is yes it is She's saying that in reference to what somebody had said during their victim impact statement yesterday. And I'm so glad that she brought that phrase back and was like, yup, Daryl Brooks, this is you. You are a narcissistic coward because that is all he has been since he was, I think, like 17. He is a coward. He ran like a scared little chicken from this parade trying to slither away in the dark of night. Ooh, I love that she describes his behavior as snake-like because that's, that is who he is and that is how he behaves. He also called him a chicken, which gets points in my column. <laughs> Because he was, because he was. She's going to go on to contrast the behavior of the community with the behavior of Gerald Brooks on this day. And it is so clear that he was behaving like a chicken. But only to stop long enough and try and take advantage of good citizens that would help. He calls and lies to his mom. Get me an Uber. I can't get into it. He lies to the officers. She's, she's getting into it with some panache now. Did you guys hear that? He lies to some officers. She's in her element right now dragging this man. She is saying what Judge Doro couldn't say throughout this entire trial. Repeatedly, we saw the time of his arrest. We heard the testimony from Daniel Ryder who took this murderer into his home. Can we talk about that guy for a second? It is so freaking crazy. Daryl Brooks showed up on his doorstep saying that he was homeless, saying that he just needed to call an Uber, yada, yada, whatever, when he had just gotten done murdering six people and injuring dozens of others, took him into his home, gave him a jacket, gave him a sandwich, because that is the kind of person that that man, Daniel Ryder, was. And held him there long enough for the police to come and take him away without any knowledge whatsoever of what had gone on. He takes advantage of everyone. He's extremely manipulative. Drag him, read him. Yes, Sue Whopper, yes he is. He takes advantage of everybody. He takes advantage of the knowledge that he has of the systems that he's engaging with, the way that he has abused the decorum and order of the court to prolong his trial I think speaks to this element as well and then his basis and his history of violence and disregard for the people in his life up until this point he absolutely thinks he's in control of everything when in fact as he sits here in custody he's in control of nothing oof and isn't that a trigger statement for Daryl Brooks Oof, he hates being reminded that he's not in control anymore. His entire relationship with Erica was about control. I think the way that he interacted with his mother was very controlling. He became the focal point of several people's lives, regardless of their better judgment or what was best for their interests. Except for his own behavior. Mr. Brooks, be quiet. 
except I'm for I'm not going to sit here and be disrespected. Mr. Brooks, be quiet. I'm not going to sit here and be disrespected. These are sentencing arguments and they can make them. How has she disrespected you? Tell me how she's disrespected you. By explaining your behavior on the day of November 21st, 2021. By listing off your criminal record that's documented history. How has she disrespected you exactly? Because it's unclear to me and probably any person viewing this who has any modicum of sense. So I could do the same thing? Mr. Brooks. There's nothing disrespectful. They are doing it in yes, a respectful way. Yes, it is. Okay, way. call me out of my name again. Go ahead. What? What are you going to do? Call, okay, call me out of my name again. What are you going to do, Daryl Brooks, with your handcuffs in your three large prison shirts? What are you going to do exactly if Sue Opper continues to call you out on your name, which is exactly what she does? Judge, the, these are the facts. You heard from so many of these parents, so many of the people that were there of that fight or flight, right, that kicked in. He ran. He fled. He tried to protect his own self. That's it. That's all he did. Everybody else sprang into action. And that's what I'm talking about. Sue Opper loves to highlight the way that this community responded to the tragedy both immediately and in the days, weeks, months, years thereafter. She highlights those people in order to contrast it with the way that Daryl Brooks did run, because he did. He sped away, dumped his clothes in a children's playset, and pretended to be a homeless person who just needed to get an Uber. He, in fact, did hide and run like a scared little chicken while the community of Waukesha rose and came together and tried to save each other from him. So many people talk this afternoon about good versus evil, and I definitely believe that's what this case was about. Daryl Brooks is the epitome of evil. He is uh, evil uh, in the person. Courtroom, please. No, you may not. The community is may good. I order the people court, are so I good. Can, I think it'd be the best for me to just are go good. Mr. Courtroom. Brooks, I'm talking. Oof, get him, Sue, get him, Sue. Yeah, you are talking, and he should shut up and listen. Yep. Get him, Sue Opper. He's so triggered by being called evil. But it's like, what What are you if not evil based on your behavior on November 21st, 2021? Like, explain that to me like I'm five, Daryl Brooks, because I don't get it. I don't, I don't understand how you have a problem with that label based on your action. I don't care about you talking. I don't care what you care about. I know you don't. Sit down and be you, quiet. Nah, Everybody has told you nah. that. Nah, Stop nah, it. nah. See, you got you got it all wrong, Miss Opper. Judge, the community has spoken. This jury returned a verdict in two hours. That's how open and shut this case was. Well, actually, it was Everybody right. saw it. Actually, it Everybody right. but Daryl Brooks. Mm -hmm. This jury you deserves you you know. to be commended for their conduct, their God patience, you know. their service. Mr. Brooks. I asked to go to the other court. I'm not so sending you there. So we wouldn't have to go. It's not, that is not a place you get to request to go to. It's, so it's when you to, disrupt the proceedings. She's almost done. I love the way that uh, Judge Dora <laughs> was fully just defending Sue Opper. She was like, no, Daryl Brooks, you should sit here and listen to what she has to say. I would, I would personally like it if you sat here and listened to what she has to say. This connective girl bossing is what we are here for. I'm trying to go to the other courtroom. No. Your Honor, I'll say this. God is good. There's been a lot of talk about God. There's been a lot of talk about religion. Daryl Brooks brought the Bible into this courtroom. Call him out on his name again, Sue Upper. You do it, queen. Especially call him out on the way that he used the Bible as a prop. We love to see it. Thank you for acknowledging it. These children are remarkable for their strength, for their healing, their physical healing. You would never know the serious injuries that they suffered as a result of Daryl Brooks by looking at them. But isn't it remarkable that in a year's time, look how far we have come as a community. Look how far these families have come. These families, these victims that stood up and pointed to Daryl Brooks and said, you will not beat me. You will not knock me down. That's what we need to move forward with as a community. Here. The way that Sue Auburn continues to emphasize the growth and the healing of the Waukesha community as a whole is so important to me. And as I said before, is so demonstrative of what she values the most about her job. She gets to help the community that she loves heal from such a tragic 
event. So this next one is from the Detective Casey music video debacle. Daryl Brooks questioned Detective Casey over and over and over again about his ability to identify uh, the person in the screenshot from the music video with their back turned to the camera as himself. So much so that Sue Opper found it necessary to introduce the full music video into evidence. Of course, Daryl Brooks found this the most egregious act of prosecutorial and legal misconduct thus far and had a lot to say. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, Sue Opper was not having it. Thank you, Judge. And another uh, thing worth noting is the testimony of Detective Casey that this video was obtained from the defendant's own Facebook account as well. The court is Objection. well aware there's media. nothing say, that... Say well, well, sir. Literally, who cares what specific social media account of yours that it came from, Daryl Brooks? As long as this music video did come from one of your social media accounts, you shouldn't be shocked that this is being entered into evidence. It's not a surprise to you. So you need to be quiet and let the state make a record. Stop gesturing at me. me to be quiet? Stop rolling your eyes at me. You Stop I'm not, mumbling. I'm looking right at you. I'm not rolling my eyes. No, you I'm have looking. throughout. I've seen I'm it looking. and I've made note I'm of it. I'm looking at you. Okay, so are you asking me to be quiet or are you telling me to be quiet? Go ahead, Attorney Opper. Thank you, Your Honor. Take and just ask. to indicate, Your Honor, <clears throat> this court has been abundantly patient with Mr. Brooks. This court absolutely has the ability to tell him to sit down and be quiet. Oh, yes, yes, <clears throat> especially given his comments immediately prior to her comment about that, this court does and should implement their ability to tell him to sit down and shut the you whatever up. He needs to be quiet. And I love that Sue Opper is at her level of frustration where she is just going to say the quiet part out loud. And you haven't done that. And I know why you haven't done that, Your Honor. And we appreciate that. The reason why she hasn't done that is because Judge Doro and everybody involved don't want there to be any question upon appeal whether or not his constitutional rights were being protected. They gave him so much runway so that there would be no question whether or not he was being heard and seen in a completely fair and constitutional way. And <laughs> I love that Sue Opper is being like, I get it, but I'm still mad. And here's why. He is not in control of this courtroom. You are. And he needs to respect that. This video was relevant based on his questioning of Detective Casey challenging his ability to identify the person who had their back turned to the camera in the still shot of State's Exhibit 175. Part of me kind of wonders if they chose a screenshot from the music video where Daryl's back is to the camera just to make him make an issue out of this because they know, they know the type of defendant that he is. And I fail to see how this team of experienced and smart, logical prosecutors would choose a video or a screenshot from the video where Daryl's back is to the camera without seeing that he would maybe have an issue with it. And of course he did, of course he did, because that's who Daryl Brooks is. Trials are fluid. When he opened the door to that, we came up with the video which Detective Casey testified repeatedly on direct examination and cross-examination as to how he knew that was Mr. Brooks because he had seen the rest of the video. He would not accept that. He pushed it and pushed it and pushed it until we played the video. Originally, I wasn't going to ask for volume. Then I did because he pushed it again and his voice. <laughs> Sue Opper, the way that she just said his voice. Oof, she has the level of disdain for his innate characteristics that those of us who are watching from the outside with a strong sense of good and bad have developed for Daryl Brooks. Like at this point, his voice is just irritating. And I can tell that she feels the same way from the way that she said his voice. And his mannerism of speech, I thought would have assisted the jury in identifying Mr. Brooks. However, I, I kind of think that she was feeling a little punitive when she said, no, play it with sound. You should play it with sound. I want the jury to hear it played with sound. 
And but now that she is having to explain her reasoning, she's come up with this logic of his voice and his mannerisms of speaking. You smartly asked me to play it without the audio, and I did that, and then I never went back to that. This is all to the benefit of this defendant who continues to suggest and impugn the integrity of this court and this prosecution without basis. He doesn't like it because the evidence is stacking up and stacking up. And whenever it does. <laughs> Sue Opper acknowledging that Judge Doro intelligently pulled her back from this honestly a point of no return that Sue Opper wanted to go to in playing the music video with sound. I love that she is acknowledging that Judge Doro is kind of a check on her and what she would actually like to do and what is legally feasible and smart. I love that she's acknowledging that and we'll kind of see like the mirror or echo of that uh, a little bit later in this video. His response is to accuse you, the court, or the prosecutors of being unethical and hiding things. I think he does that because he knows that such accusations will delay the proceedings while the adults in the room address them like they are claims that are being made by another adult in the room, even though Daryl Brooks is an absolute infant internally. There is nothing in law that prevents me from pulling something out of my briefcase right now and making it an exhibit if it's relevant. It's like maybe a day later or two days later when we understand that Daryl Brooks only heard the first part of her statement, which is there's no there's nothing in law that prevents me from pulling something out of my briefcase and making it an exhibit. He only heard that part. He didn't hear the if it's relevant based on the whole like photo that he showed of the grandkids or whatever in the whole Erica Patterson situation. We're definitely going to do an Erica Patterson video because I love her responses to Daryl. I love that he heard like this part of Sue Opper's argument against him and then was like, OK, I know exactly what to do. I'm going to have my uh, Perry Mason moment. You decide what's relevant, what's admissible, not Mr. Brooks. There is no law he can cite to no law, no authority whatsoever that says I can't make an exhibit essentially on the fly if it's called for. And that's exactly what just happened here. So I apologize for my tone with the court. Sue, Susan, you don't need to apologize for your tone with the court. I'm pretty sure Judge Doro knows that you're not expressing this towards her, right? Oh, Sue, she's such a little sweetie. She reminds me of if Peppermint Patty from the Peanuts grew up and got a law degree. Like, she's just, she has such a tough exterior with a heart of gold, and she shows it in moments like this where she's like, I am sorry for my tone. It's not you. It's somebody else. I don't mean to direct this at the court. It is very frustrating. The court has demonstrated much more patience than I have. Love when Sue Opper gets to throw in little comments like this. <laughs> that really express how upset and angry she is with Daryl Brooks for his behavior, not only on November 21st of 2021, but also his continued pattern of complete disregard for any type of law or rule or norm inside of the courtroom. I love when she gets to sound off about it. Good for you, Sue Opper. You talk about it. With Mr. Brooks, we have ethical obligations as well, to be fair in this courtroom. We have respected that entirely. The reason I was laughing 30 seconds ago was because the exhibit was mislabeled. There was an extra Y and it said Exhibit E. And I turned around to the paralegal and pointed that out and we laughed over it, the word Exhibit E. <laughs> Which objectively is a funny word. It's funny when certain words are misspelled. But of course, Daryl Brooks is so narcissistic that he assumes any laughter has to be an element of negativity directed towards him. And what he explains further is that he perceives any commentary by the prosecution as negative comments that must be about him and they're whispering about him, etc., etc., carrying on when no, it's just human people experiencing human emotions when you're not the center of their world, Daryl Brooks. There has been no disrespect directed at Mr. Brooks 
directly in any fashion. He can object all he wants, and he has made that clear. He will continue to object and obstruct the court and obstruct these proceedings every last chance he gets. But legally, everything has been above board and proper, and this exhibit is no exception. I apologize for my tone, Judge. But my decision to admit the video without audio stands. I, I think I deserve a chance to rebut what was just said. <laughs> you being able to have a rebuttal to a prosecutor's direct assessment of your character and your behavior is not an element of a fair trial, Daryl Brooks. You are sorely mistaken. Oh my God. I think I deserve that much if it's a fair trial. What information do you want to provide to me uh, about that last exhibit? About what last exhibit? I'm talking about the, the, the audacity of the prosecution to just put that on the record when it's stating un it's untrue. Who who else hates his body positioning here? Why is he what what is this? Like why why is he being I don't like the way he's having puppet arms right now. Okay? That also bothers me. I'm going to be hypercritical and nonsensical like that because we are talking about Daryl Brooks, but it's like why are you doing weird stuff with your arms, my guy? I don't know what you're talking about. What's untrue? We just heard her talk for five, ten minutes straight. Now don't nobody know what I'm talking about. I don't there know was a specifically made to, what you're talking about, There was a reference about, made sir. to what I'm supposed to know about the evidence stacking up and this and that as if that has any bearing on what I still think and what I'm still going to present. It doesn't. Well, that's not what we're talking about at the moment. I, I made a ruling she, on she's an She's been laughing and, and making comments under her breath the whole the time during the whole trial, and I never said nothing. I don't know what's being said, but I can tell that it's directed <laughs> towards me. Narcissist. Narcissist. F fire alarm. Red alert. We have a narcissist right here. I literally think that he thinks that anytime Sue Opper opens her mouth inside of this courtroom, it must be a comment about him. He, because of course, of course, he thinks that her world revolves around him. And yeah, it kind of does, but it revolves around him in the sense of she is putting her best effort towards putting him in jail forever. And that's exactly what she did. I'm not, a, I'm not an idiot. For her to sit there, and try to play it off as if she's not referencing to me. She must think I'm an idiot. Nobody that is very that, disrespectful to me. I haven't said anything about that until today. She's done it numerous times. What are you talking about? I don't her know what you're laughing talking. under her breath. Her trying to cover up the microphone so they can laugh and hee hee and key key key. What? <laughs> what do? You, what does that mean? Laugh and hee hee and key key key. If the only thing that reminds me of, and this is an obscure reference, but the Scissors Sisters song called Let's Have a Kiki, and I don't think that's what the prosecutors are doing when they cover up the mic in order to talk to each other. Pretty sure Judge Doro is going to explain what they're actually doing outside of a extreme narcissist point of view in like five seconds. So let me just roll this. That they've been doing that the whole time. I didn't Any say anything. I didn't say sir, anything about it. I have not noticed that. What I notice are three attorneys who cover up the microphone so that they're not heard when they're conferring with each other about evidentiary issues about, or about testimony. So why is it always laughing and, and, and giggling? I haven't noticed that. anything I you want to put on as, the record. I'm putting it on the record as if I get a chance. No, you need to let me finish. As it relates to the video and my decision to admit She it. just admitted that she just now came with the exhibit. It was not it. She just said she just made it an exhibit. It that was not an exhibit before she made it one. So do you have more weird arm energy? He keeps doing this. He keeps doing it. Stop acting like you're being operated by a puppeteer who's never seen a human body move before, Daryl Brooks. This is petty and I know and I'm right. Some legal basis, sir, for your position. Because I'm not What do I need any. legal basis for when she just admitted on the record that she just made this exhibit up no, right she now? Didn't. That is <laughs> get him get get him judge doro do you have some legal basis for your position because obviously he doesn't obviously he doesn't because why because he fired his attorney it like immediately before trial like a couple of days before trial oh my god
It's a complete mischaracterization. Sure, she did not. That's what, so she wasn't implying that by saying that she could she did pull not anything make out of her suitcase. So that's a figure of You're speech. <laughs> For a judge to be looking at a defendant and the phrase coming out of her mouth is, sir, that's a figure of speech. You know we are so far beyond the pale that it's almost not even worth articulating the absurdity of the situation. Oh my God. He just, he's not a lawyer. Obviously he's not a lawyer. Um, and so he has no understanding of what's going on right now. And he's blaming it on everybody else around him. It's everybody else's fault that he doesn't understand, quote unquote, because I actually do think he has a level of understanding that's higher than what he's articulating at this point in time, doesn't understand what's going on right now. It, do you think maybe you would have, I don't know, a better understanding if you had not fired your attorney and chosen to represent yourself? Is this maybe a a you choice that's having some consequences, Daryl Brooks? So now we're on to closing arguments and Daryl is really pushing the issue of jury nullification, even though Judge Doro has read him case law and she has stated to him point blank that if he mentions jury nullification, then his closing argument will be over. Judge Doro comes down ferociously on Daryl Brooks for even suggesting the notion of jury nullification, saying it to the jurors, and tells him that his closing argument will be completely finished uh, if he so much as mentions it. And then Sue Opper is actually the one to walk her back from this hard line. I just found that really interesting considering the earlier video where Sue Opper seems to thank Judge Doro for expressing more patience than she does. And I like, I like this energy that they kind of express in these clips that they're kind of like balancing forces on each other. Let me, let me know what your take on this entire thing is. Your Honor, hold up. Hold up now. I'm the only one that has to be made rules for for closing arguments. But Did you see the way that he took his mask off for theatrics? I just had to include that part because this man, for all of his I don't understand and I don't know what's happening, I don't know anything about this process, yada yada, for as... Uh, unknowing as he claims to be of the process at hand, he sure knows how to play into the theatrical element that could or could not benefit him. I'll just say that. But not the prosecution. How is that fair? How is that balanced? Mr. How is that fair? Uh, so A, the prosecution is not arguing for jury nullification. They are intending to put you away for a thousand years, and that is what they're arguing for. So this special instruction that Judge Doro has specifically applied to you as it results to jury nullification doesn't quite suit the prosecution, does it? And then B, the prosecution does have to follow a lot of rules as it comes to their closing argument, which are like the basic like legal rules when it comes to making a closing argument, but you have no knowledge or basis of knowledge for the rules that they're already adhering to, which is also why you're encountering so many dif difficulties uh, as you're kind of talking to Judge Doro about what you want to do for your closing argument. Brooks, I'm squarely faced with your defiance regarding the issue of jury nullification it's that is defiance. requiring it's me to address this issue and to tell you very Your expressly Honor, that that is the rule I vehemently for your object closing to that. argument. I vehemently object to that. Whoever taught Daryl Brooks the word vehemently, I hate you. Okay. Your objection is noted for the record. But May I ask for a legal reconsideration of your ruling? That request is denied. May I uh, respectfully ask for a uh, matter of fact, I reject that ruling and take exception to that rule. All right, sir, I am going to bring the jury out. And I'm going to inform them that they have the power. And if you do that, I will dismiss the jury and I will declare that your right to present a closing argument Under what law has been law? forfeited based upon I make oral, how I've outlined that today. I'm not going to declare that at this point because I want to see what you will do. Uh, but if you raise the issue of jury nullification, I will immediately dismiss the jury. You will forfeit your right you can't to do that. Uh, present a closing under argument. Under what lawful law can you? And then if you continue to interrupt under what me. lawful law? You will be removed to the other courtroom as I complete the instructions. So I'm being held in contempt again. 
Oof, she was so ready to kneecap this man, give him what is the legal equivalent of a kill shot during his closing argument if he so much as uttered the phrase jury nullification. And I understand why, because you, if you watch this full clip, like I've edited it down for context reasons, um, but if you watch this entire thing, she has fully explained to him the parameters that he would go outside of if he mentions jury nullification and the case law to back her argument up. She she is ironclad in her decision making, but Sue Opper is going to chime in here in a second, and I do understand why. Is it civil or criminal? Your Honor, All right, go ahead. I apologize. May I ask the court to consider perhaps an alternative, and I fully respect the ruling the court has just made and I understand the basis for it. We all know the defendant in his petulance will say jury nullification in the first three seconds the jury's in the room. That's so unnecessarily funny, Sue Whopper. You did not have to make it three seconds after the jury is in the room. But at the same time, is she wrong? Is she wrong? No. Honestly, no. Um, because when you reflect on his sentencing statement... Or when you reflect on his closing statement, he does mention it almost immediately. Objection the to that. Proper I don't thing think to that do. I, I be think you're right. Stop interrupting, attorney. I don't think Opera, I should please. be talked down. To. Okay, let let me just encourage us to consider the context here that even Daryl Brooks would have been aware of as this was occurring. Right. So the judge has just come down extremely harshly with regards to him mentioning jury nullification during his closing argument. Sue Opper has interrupted her after she has made this judgment and has said, I have an alternate way that we can handle this situation. If you are Daryl Brooks and you value being able to make your closing argument to a jury, which, I mean, I don't, I don't know if that was even important to him at this point in time. I don't know if he was just arguing to, for the sake of arguing, which does seem reasonable, honestly, knowing him as a human being. Um, but if I were Daryl Brooks and I really wanted to give my closing argument, I would probably choose to, I don't know, hear Sue Opper out in this moment. Maybe not uh, sound off with ridiculous sentiments. Allow him to make his closing argument. I will object if he misstates the law you can instruct the jury to disregard any misstatements of the law and we continue in that fashion if possible for a reasonable amount of time and if it becomes to the point where there's no reasonable legal credible argument that's being made then the court can decide as to whether or not he's forfeited his right to a closing argument. But we could at least try to, by merely objecting and the court telling the jury to disregard and instructing Mr. Brooks to move on to the next topic, we could try. To I think that Sue Opper was coming to the rescue here because she thought that maybe upon appeal, such a quick and stark decision to remove his right to make a closing argument if he simply mentioned jury nullification, if the people reviewing his appeal had full context for the type of person that Daryl Brooks is, I think Sue Opper was like, let's just 4D chess this and allow him to talk about it because honestly, I don't think it's that big of a, there's not much at stake here if he mentions it to the jury. I don't think they're going to go with that. I think that was part of her angle. But I think ultimately she wanted there to be a more solid case for if this was ever up for appeal. Um, and she just didn't want there to be any question in relation to Judge Doro preventing Daryl from making a closing statement simply because he mentioned jury nullification, given the type of person that he is. I think she was galaxy braining at this point. To allow him his opportunity to provide a closing argument. If that's unworkable, then I think this record will be very clear as to the efforts of this court. And that statement right there, I think, really speaks to um, exactly what her end game was in advising Judge Doro that maybe there's an alternate route uh, for how we can get Daryl to uh, deliver his sentencing. 
because as as a prosecutor, she's still a custodian of the record. She is still somebody who has a grave stake in making sure that this case passes all smell tests. And I think that's what we're seeing here. And I think um, there there is materials in the bench book, or I'm sorry, the jury instruction 705 um, that talk about a jury instruction this court could even give um, telling the jury that they are not at liberty to disregard the law. But we're not going that far yet because, frankly, you have told them and you will tell them that closing arguments are not evidence. I think they will abide by that. So I know it's going to require um, effort for the court to allow Mr. Brooks to try and proceed, but I think we should try that or something similar to that in an effort to get through this next step or else we will continue at this pace. And that her, the sentiment that she explained as her reasoning for offering up this secondary option, that she just didn't want them to continue on at the pace that they were going on forever. I think that's also a uh, kind of backs up my theory that she wanted to suggest this option as an alternate so that if this case was reviewed upon appeal and the issue of his closing argument was examined, that that the people responsible for reviewing his appeal wouldn't be like, well, he didn't really have a fair shot at giving his closing argument because they knew that he would mention jury nullification and they just negated anything he would say after that. I think that that was her ultimate thought process. Her saying that even though it would be hard for the court, that they should give him the opportunity, <laughs> also speaks to her saying like, yeah, I know he's been an ass to you for these past 25 minutes, but let's refocus on making sure that this never comes back up again. I'm certainly willing to try that. It's about all we could come up with, Your Honor. I mean, I'm certainly willing to try it in this courtroom and then there there judge doro is i'm absolutely willing to try that and it makes sense because she heard a voice of reason exactly like sue opper was able to acknowledge that judge doro was a voice of reason in the detective casey situation so let's i mean uh informal poll do we think that sue opper gets any thanks for her providing this alternate option where uh daryl brooks doesn't immediately get his right to have a closing argument immediately revoked upon jury nullification do you think she gets any thanks for that let's 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 hear what happens next if he disregards that to excuse the jury and then have him present from the other courtroom would be the second step and then third would be a forfeiture your Honor, I object to that. Your objection is noted for the record. That will be the course of action that this court takes. He heard all of what just happened, and he still said, I object to that. Go take a long walk off a short dock, Daryl Brooks. But wait, you can't because you're in prison for a thousand years. Never mind. So this is just the first video and what could obviously be a long line of Susan Opera highlights from the Daryl Brooks trial. We love Sue Opper in this house. We love her energy. And uh, if you have any Sue Opper clips that you think would fit into the next video, please leave them down in the comments. And again, if you're new here, please consider liking and subscribing. Bye, babes. I'm Maddie from Mules and Murder, and I will catch you in the next one.